All right, now that we know how to count how many significant figures there are in a number, we're going to see how to use that to carry the information about how accurate or precise a measurement is throughout uh, your calculations. And first thing, okay, talk real quick about rounding. So um, at the end, we're going to end up rounding to the correct number of significant figures or, you know, the correct place. Um, first thing, most important, do not round until you've finished all of your other operations. Do everything. Keep, you're going to end up keeping track as you go through, but don't round till the end. Okay. Next, pretty simple. If the first digit that you're going to drop, okay, the first one that gets rounded, or excuse me, that gets dropped, if it's five or bigger, round up. If the first digit that's being dropped is less than five, then keep it as it is. For example, here, if we were to round 12.4999 seconds to two significant figures, or the ones place, it would round to 12 seconds. Um, a couple things here. First, see these subscripts right here? That's what I do when, when I want to keep track of my um, how many significant figures or the precision of a number during a calculation, but I don't want to round yet. What I do is I write the first one or two or maybe a few more um, numbers that I would drop if this were the end of the calculation as a subscript. So I took this measurement, you know, that 12.4999 seconds, and I calculated or whatever. Um, but I know f because of the accuracy or precision of my instruments that I'm only allowed to keep the ones place or two significant figures. So the one and the two are significant figures. The four and the three nines are insignificant figures. The first digit that I'm dropping is less than five. And so the first digit that I keep, I keep the same. So I round this to 12 seconds. Notice you don't do this recursively. In other words, because this is a nine, you don't round this to a five and then round to a three. No, you just look at the first digit you're dropping. If it's less than five, keep the last digit you're keeping the same. If it's five or bigger, round up. All right. Next, there's two different rules for carrying the accuracy or precision of a measurement throughout calculations. They depend upon what operations you're doing. One rule um, is for with your adding and or subtracting. And it's real simple. This is it right here. Find the number of the numbers that you're adding and subtracting um, that has its last significant figure farthest to the left in the number. And if once you're done, if that's all you're doing, round the result to that place. So memorize this for sure. For example, let's say we're adding these three measurements, 14.129 meters, 20 meters. Notice no decimal point. So that zero, that trailing zero does not count because there is no written decimal point. So our last sig figs here and 7.22 meters. Of these three measurements, the one with the last significant figure farthest to the left in this number is this, the 20 meters. The last significant figure in this number is the two. In this number, the last significant figure is the nine, three places to the right of the decimal. In this one, it's the last two, two places to the right of the decimal. The two here is further to the left than the nine, but this two is farther to the left than either one of those. So that means that this is the place, the tens place, is the place that will round our answer. So when you add up these three numbers, you get 41.349 meters. Notice my subscripts here. And then finally, if I, this is the last operation, I'm going to round. Because of this measurement here, I have to round to the tens place. The first digit that I'm dropping is less than five, so I keep it the same. It's all right, 40 meters. Notice I have to put that zero there. If I didn't, it would be a different size number. Okay, four meters is not the correct answer. 40, four zero is. Okay, the next rule for carrying the um, information about accuracy or precision of a number throughout your calculations is when you're multiplying and or dividing. And this rule is really simple. All you do is look at all of the numbers you're multiplying or dividing and count how many significant figures are in each of the numbers. Whichever has the least amount of significant figures, that's how many significant figures you will round the results to. So memorize this. 
For example, if we're multiplying 15.25 centimeters, the measurement, by 0 0.001 centimeters, okay, multiply it out, the answer is 0 0.01525 centimeters squared. Okay, so because we're multiplying, we want to count how many significant figures. In this measurement right here, 15.25, they're all non-zero digits, they all count four significant figures. This number here, this measurement, these three zeros are all leading zeros, so they do not count as significant figures. The only significant figure here is the one, and it only has one significant figure. And so, because one is less than four, we round the answer to one significant figure. Again, notice the subscripts. I didn't round yet. I just kept, kept them there, but as subscripts. So these two zeros, this one and this one, do not count as significant figures because they're leading zeros. There is a first significant figure. We only get to keep one, so everything else I write as a subscript, and then if this is my final operation, I'm going to round. And because the first digit that I'm dropping is 5 or bigger, I round up, and so my answer here would be 0 0.02 centimeters squared. Now finally, mixed operations. So what if you're, you have a, a calculation where you have to both add or subtract and multiply or divide? Okay? Well, the rule is that you follow the order of operations, and you keep track during each step of where you would have rounded if that was the last or the only step in the, the operations until you get to the very end. So what's important about this, okay, most of you are probably used to doing everything at once in your calculator, putting the whole formula in there and getting the answer. To really keep track of the significant figures so you know how to round it correctly, you're going to have to make yourself do each step separately. So let's look at that. For example, we have this calculation right here, 4.18 grams minus 2.081 grams divided by 7.0 centimeters times 20 centimeters squared. So the order of operations says we do the parentheses first. So when we do that, that's subtraction, and we care about where the last significant figure is. In this measurement, it's 2 to the right of the decimal, that 8 there. In this one, it's the 1, 3 to the right of the decimal. 2 to the right of the decimal is farther to the left than 3 to the right of the decimal. So in our answer, we get to keep 2 past the decimal. Notice I didn't round yet, so I kept my subscript, my subscript 9 there. That's a 9, this is a G. And the, on the bottom, okay, we multiply. So the rule for multiplication is the number of significant figures. Because there's an explicit decimal point here, this trailing 0 does count, and we have 1, 2 significant figures. In this number, there is no explicit decimal point, so the trailing zero does not count, and we only have one significant figure. One is less than two, so we only get to keep one significant figure here. Notice the subscript. So seven times 20 is 140, so I write one, subscript four, zero. Not 14, 140 centimeters cubed. Then the last step in the operation is the division. So we care about how many significant figures there are because we're dividing. This number here has one, two, three significant figures. This has one. One's less than three. So our answer, my calculator, tells me 0 0.0149 grams per centimeter cubed, but only keeping one significant figure. Because the first digit that we're dropping is less than five, we don't round up. We just keep it as 0 0.01. And that's our final answer, 0 0.01 grams per centimeter cubed.